welcome to Indianomics. Uh, this special budget edition of Indianomics has uh, a unique format. We have one tax expert, uh, Mr. Sudhir Kapadia of Ernst & Young, to tell us what industry or what a, a tax expert may legitimately expect from the budget. And we have a public finance expert and an economist, Dr. Govinda Rao of the NIPFP, to tell us what are the revenue implications of uh, the various uh, demands or requests that industry is making. Let me come first uh, uh, to you, Mr. Kapadia. Uh, let's start uh, perhaps with indirect taxes uh, because you know, the GST is creating the big buzz. Uh, what do you think is a credible and widespread expectation? Well, the credible and widespread expectation, Lata, I would say is uh, some roadmap or convergence towards the GST rates. Uh, why? Because if the directionally that's where you are going, then might as well as give it a start a year earlier, 18 months earlier. Take service tax, for mm. instance. Uh, you know, we have we are perhaps the only country which has a list of 117 mm. positive items okay. and leaving room for so much interpretation. Mm. So the argument here is that supposing we have a very small negative list, which is what GST hopefully should do in any case. Mm. What we are doing, and I, I don't have the uh, mm. stats for it, but I would bet that what we will do is expand the tax base for service tax considerably. Mm. So that addresses one part of the revenue uh, constraint uh, problem to say that, you know, will we, will we lose revenue? So hopefully you will collect much more in service tax if you improve the base considerably. Mm -hmm. And uh, excise, of course, there's not much scope because we're already at 10%. Service tax is already at 10%. Uh, GST, we are talking a maximum rate of 20%. Uh, percent going forward mm. at least increase the base but don't increase the rates okay. so that's one way of uh, ensuring that your uh, needs for revenue are uh, taken care of at the same time your rate remains the same so i think that's the bottom line expectation so on what you're talking about tax is rates. an excise of 10 percent a service tax of eight percent with a vastly expanded that's net right. okay now let me put this to the public finance expert uh, dr rao you are clearly the first person who spoke about a universal service tax and a small negative list uh, at least i heard it from you at least 18 months back if, if even if you had said it earlier uh, what do you think will be the revenue implication of this uh, you know, service tax going to may, becoming universal and being placed at eight uh, percent. What do you think will be the extra accrual to the exchequer? You know, that was that was the recommendation made in two thousand one. Okay. Almost ten years ago. Okay. Okay. Now coming to the the numbers, mm. I think Mr. Kapadia is absolutely right that we need to you know sort of it will expand the base. There is no point in unnecessarily increasing the rates. Mm. Um, but you know. I'll, you know, I mean, again, when you are talking about the services, you know, there are certain areas where there are some difficulties. Okay. For example, real estate uh, related ones, housing and real estate related ones. You know, in, you know, if you take that out, and again, in the financial services, you have to be careful. You have to, you cannot take the turnovers. You have to basically take the service component of that. Mm. If you take out all that, the extra revenue that to be estimated on a very conservative basis, mm. in fact, you see, you can increase the tax base by about another 200,000 crores, okay. which means that if you can get about 15 to 18,000 crores of additional revenue. Okay. But more than that, what you can really do is, uh, you know, I mean, that will basically integrate the entire tax system, and okay. that's the way forward. Yeah, I get your point, sir, in terms of a larger, uh, uh, you know, measure towards tax administration reform, but uh, where if it is 8%, uh, how much do you expect uh, the exchequer to uh, benefit? If it is 10%, uh, how much? Yeah, around, uh, you know, sort of, as I said, if you reward the real estate and the, mm. you know, just to a considerable extent, financial sector, you know, 15,000 crores. Okay. 15,000 crores is somewhere, you know, okay. you know, approximately the amount of money that you can okay. get. Sir, a related question, which will be tough given the fact that inflation is likely to get even worse with this uh, kind of crude price hike. But if the excise duties were raised to 12%, something which uh, Mr. Kapadia is not considering now for obvious reasons because of the uh, incoming GST, but then if this fiscal stimulus argument rolling it back were to be made, and if we bring it to 12%, what would be the gain for the exchequer? 
Yeah, Lata, before that, I want to say one other thing. <coughs> I think, you see, if these people, you know, you know, without changing the rate, one thing in order to, um, when moving towards the, G, you know, sort of GST, what they can do is, in addition to expanding the base of, um, you know, extending the tax to all services, they can also try to do a common threshold. You know, if you see the, if, you know, excise duty threshold is 1.5 crore. And service tax threshold is just about 15 lakhs. Suppose you make it 50 lakhs for both goods and services. You actually have a goods and services tax at 10 percent. You know, uh, you know, uh, at the manufacturing stage, put in place without uh, having to go through the constitutional amendment. Now, on the question of increasing the rate that you mentioned, you know, if you increase the increase the the excise duty rate, you will. Yeah, from 10 to 12 percent, you might get uh, um, a figure something close to 28,000, 30,000 crores. Sure. I think that's the number that um, you know, um, you know, broadly we okay. will get. Well, that's a very um, tempting figure you know, to forego. You know, we, yes, Dr. Rao, it's a very tempting yeah. figure to forego. But uh, uh, just to put uh, what uh, Dr. Rao was saying, uh, Mr. Kapadia, if the uh, goods tax uh, uh, excise duties uh, threshold is reduced to 50 a lakh, uh, would that be uh, too much of harassment? Uh, and basically, uh, you know, would it be possible for the administration to get so much into mm. the net? Yeah, no, that is, I think that is a real challenge, Alata. If I recollect, it was uh, Mr. Manmohan Singh as finance minister mm. who on TV had stated uh, a decade ago uh, that 40% of the manufactured uh, economy it was outside the excise net. Okay. Now, this was, you know, this was the confession of a finance minister. So, it is so this answers the question that, you know, you, you can, you know, you can reduce, you can say no threshold, you can say everything is excisable, you can say why 12, 14% and you get another 28,000 crore. But uh, I think real, uh, you know, real collections don't work on, uh, on these bases because people, I think, will find ways uh, then not to get into the tax net. So, okay, personal income tax, uh, what is a... Uh, a legitimate expectation. Right. There I think the legitimate expectation is again thanks to the beast of inflation whether the 1.6 lakhs at the lower level should at least go up to 1.8 lakhs mm. uh, and again this is on the basis that the DTC prescribes 2 lakhs mm. as the threshold a year later in 2012. Uh, given what's happening in the western world uh, with UK at 50% mm. maximum personal uh, income tax, tax rates I don't think the upper uh, level uh, will have much joy. Mm. If it is remaining means as it is, I think no news is good news. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Rao, if it is indeed increased, uh, the, the limit increased uh, for uh, personal income tax by 20,000 rupees, that is from 1.6 to 1.8 lakhs uh, on the way to 2 lakhs, what is the uh, money foregone? As uh, Mr. Kapadia said, the beast of inflation is haunting all, uh, you know, sort of middle class people and there is a lot of expectation and your DTCs uh, suggest that, you see, I mean, so the DTC estimated that they will have the exemption limited two lakhs of rupees. Okay. Now, if you really increase it by twenty thousand, you know, I mean, this is exemption increasing the exemption limit is something which everybody gains. Mm -hmm. You know, almost to three crores of uh, taxpayers. Yes. Uh, which would mean that uh, the the gain will be of the order of somewhere about forty to forty five. I'm sorry, loss mm -hmm. will be of the order of something like forty to forty five thousand crores. Okay. Well, obviously you the know, that's a that's a big loss, and I'm yes. not very certain where this late at mm -hmm. this stage mm -hmm. they will you know sort of um, you know sort of uh, go in for it okay of course the ameliorative argument would be that if this is done there would be perhaps more consumption and uh, therefore output in the economy and growth will hopefully compensate yeah, pausing, which is the broad uh, argument what is interesting pausing here is that if i remember last year the maximum personal rate yes. went down by two percent yes uh, but the increase in personal taxes in the 10 months this year is about 14 percent non-corporate income taxes. Yes, sir. So, I mean, yeah, there are many factors yeah. which propel growth, but uh, a lower tax yeah. is often yeah, advanced. I think 40,000 is a huge, huge figure, I agree. At so, a time like this, uh, yeah, it may absolutely. be difficult for the government to forego. Okay, the next one we come to is really corporate tax. Uh, now, corporate income tax, again, on the way to DTC, what are the expectations? 
Well, if you remember, initially the DTC talked about a 25% rate, but then they had a, a gross assets tax uh, mm, yes. to compensate for it. And I think rightly so, the, 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 the framers of DTC at that time made it very clear that it's a package deal. Mm. And corporate India opted for, you know, not having the gross assets yes. tax and saying, you know, we are not asked for a lower corporate rate, so let it be where, okay. uh, where it is. Uh, the only point on corporate tax which must be remembered is the surcharges. Mm. The rate is much more than 30 percent. It's nearly 34 uh, percent. When will the surcharges go? I think that's a legitimate question. The other is the dividend distribution tax. Uh, though, of course, the shareholders don't pay tax on dividends, the fact is that at the corporate level, the effective rate mm. uh, on an Indian company today is one of the highest in either G7 or in the BRIC countries. Mm. It's one of the highest. Perhaps we are the term number one or number two. From the year 2000, to 2011, there has been a steady increase by nearly 6 percentage points in the average corporate tax, headline corporate tax rate around the world. Okay. And as a policy point, it is interesting to understand why is it that corporate rates countries are trying to reduce. Obviously, one is to attract capital. Now, the argument against that would be where India doesn't need to attract capital. We have the market, we have this. So, so you could well turn around and say that. Mm. But the bottom line is that if it improves better compliance, if, if it impre uh, increases the tax base and most importantly, if it does mm -hmm. uh, improve capital and attraction, uh, you know, then is there some uh, gain saying okay. that you move towards a more benign corporate tax rate. China is at 25% since three years. Okay, so the legitimate, expe your expectation would be what, a drop of about two percentage points? Yeah. Right. I would think you should say 27 and a half to begin with. And the effective rate would still be closer That's to right. 30. Absolutely. Well, uh, Dr. Rao, uh, what's, uh, uh, what are the chances that the FISC would move towards that? And uh, uh, in any case, uh, how much is the loss in that case? Well, I mean, the issue of whether the corporation tax um, at this, you know, should be reduced to 27.5% is something which, at this stage, mm. is something which uh, the, the finance minister has to take a call. Because in any case, when the DTC, come, the, the, you know, their, their taxes code comes into picture, he'll have to reduce it to 25%. Now, if you do that again, um, you know, the loss is going to be quite substantial, you know, it's because corporation taxes has been one of the most buoyant taxes. And then, you know, I mean, at two and a half, you know, sort of, at, at this particular state, the tax rate comes to somewhere about 33 point, uh, you know, 15 percent or something like that. And then if you reduce it to 27.5 percent, you know, almost to five and a half percentage point reduction would entail a loss of about 40,000 crores. Okay. So I think uh, Mr. Kapadia meant only an overall cut of 2% yes, and not uh, a cut of 5%. So perhaps uh, it will be more in the nature and, of 20,000. Just pausing here, we have to remember that if not this year, we are moving no, away from profit-linked uh, deductions. So I think the revenue saved... You see, uh, if you look at the statement which the government has started mm. publishing from 2008-9 onwards, mm. the amount of tax expenditure mm. which the government is estimating on account of various incentives... I am quite sure that those will go down considerably uh, as we move to an investment linked regime. So I think there is a lot of savings, uh, so headline rate may look uh, you know, more benign, yeah. but you are saving on tax expenditure by removing the exemptions. Okay, but that would be still uh, one year. Well, I mean, if they, no, yeah. if, yeah, yeah, but but if they are removing the tax, you know, sort of exemptions and preferences, I think there is a, a case for reducing the, the nominal rate. But, but, you know, the point is that we are not doing 